Hello and welcome to the program today. This is Bruce Fenton, author of The Forgotten Exodus, The Inter-Africa Theory of Human Evolution. I'm going to be talking about a new story that's just come out um, on a Neanderthal bone in Germany. And this one is called the Hollenstein Stadel Cave Neanderthal Bone. Um, there's an article here from Cosmos magazine, which I can quickly briefly give you the title. Hollenstein's Daddle Cave rewrites history of Neanderthal human relations. Mitochondrial DNA analysis suggests greater Neanderthal diversity, influenced by interbreeding with a previously unknown migration of humans from Africa. Now, the same story is all across mainstream media. We've got it here in New Scientist. Uh, they've gone for a slightly different title. We may have mated with Neanderthals more than 219,000 years ago. Now, both of these articles um, well, make the same error, really. So we're going to go into that. We're going to go into, what, in fact, what all of the mainstream articles are, are skipping over or missing out and not really explaining to you, um, the reader. Um, and that is that there is a glaring anomaly in here because this really is a problematic find. Um, the genes of Homo sapiens have been detected in the bone and they have the dating for the interbreeding event that you know put them there has been given as between 470,000 and 220,000 years ago. Now that's incredible. I mean, it's no secret that early hominins of different shapes and sizes uh, with very different genetic lineages, even those of you know, what we can call different species, uh, indulged in exotic sexual liaisons. Um, certainly the modern human genome carries the evidence of all this past interbreeding, and depending on specific geographic origins of any individual living today, they may well carry between 2 to 3% Neanderthal genes, perhaps 6% Denisovan genes, and possibly even genes from other currently unnamed hominins that we detected in a number of recent genetic studies. The very latest discovery here, though, is one that's uh, really exciting, especially for me as you know, author of a, a book in this subject area, um, because we're talking about the identification of Homo sapiens genes in a 124,000-year-old Neanderthal femur. Um, the bone from which the mitochondrial DNA was extracted and analysed was actually discovered back in 1937 inside the Hollenstein Stadel Cave in southern Germany. Now, enthusiasts of archaeological research will know that the Hollenstein Stadel Cave is already famous for the discovery of the earliest known wooden statuette, dated to around 35 to 40,000 years ago and popularly known as Lion Man. And with the benefit of cutting-edge DNA extraction technologies, this German Neanderthal femur has finally revealed more of its secrets to us, and the findings so far are nothing short of astonishing, especially for academics who are dogmatically attached to the current common consensus of the out-of-Africa theory. Because it transpires that the previous owner of the femur was a Neanderthal unlike any other yet discovered. This early human ancestor had apparently diverged away from other Neanderthal populations at least 219 to 316,000 years ago, suggesting the existence of an entire population of Neanderthals of which we know nothing. This same mysterious Neanderthal population had interbred with archaic Homo sapiens, and no more recently than 220,000 years ago, and as I said, possibly, potentially as far back as 470,000 years ago. Now that's taking it right back to almost the, the time in which Homo sapiens diverged from Neanderthals you know, after having you know, shared a common ancestor previously. So the problem with this early interbreeding is one which is being skipped over by all the mainstream media, and that's that the there is no evidence that actually places Homo sapiens in Europe at any time before 45,000 years ago. So the big question here is, if Homo sapiens did not reach Europe until around 45,000 years ago, how has their DNA turned up in a Neanderthal fossil in Germany dated to 124,000 years ago, with the additional finding that the interbreeding event doubles that age? So it's not even just that it's 124,000 years ago that this happened, but yeah, we're, we're going way back to perhaps beyond 220,000 years ago. So due to the almost unassailable position that the out-of-Africa theory holds in the science community, the immediate reaction to this spectacular Neanderthal DNA study has been sadly predictable, uh, as it is equally unscientific. 
which is that rather than questioning the holy cow hypothesis in which Homo sapiens emerge in Africa between 300 to 200,000 years ago uh, before eventually migrating outwards across the planet somewhere around 70,000 years ago, uh, eventually entering Europe 45,000 years ago, uh, a patch has been applied to this doomed theory um, just to keep it up on its feet, which is, I think is quite sad. And we're going to go into why this is you know, a particularly... I think devastating find for those um, head in the sand academics that are not willing to kind of see the wood for the trees because just as there's no evidence of homo sapiens in Europe early enough to explain the Hollenstein style genetic lag for interbreeding there is no evidence of Neanderthals living in Africa that can be used as an to offer some sort of an alternate explanation for this in fact there is only one region on earth that has so far provided evidence of both early homo sapiens and early Neanderthals at a suitable point in time, and that's East Asia. Unknown to most of the world's public, perhaps, China has produced a great many extremely ancient Homo sapiens fossils. Some of these finds range back to as far as 250,000 years ago. Uh, indeed, China boasts the earliest known fossils associated with fully anatomically modern humans, and some of these finds are potentially up to 180,000 years old. Now, archaeological discoveries in China have also produced evidence of yet-to-be-named early hominins um, that might be Denisovans, or they could be some kind of Denisovan-Neanderthal-Sapiens hybrids, uh, or possibly something entirely new to science. So China is looking more and more like a hot zone for early human evolution and all this you know, hominin interbreeding. Uh, but there's really much more to this story that needs to be understood. So despite the fact that Neanderthals have long been accepted as a European hominin species, this is not as clear-cut as we might expect. There were certainly some very early forms of Neanderthals living in Europe, around 430,000 years ago, and we have a pile of their bones at Cima de la Huesos archaeological site in northern Spain. Uh, it seems quite fair to say that populations of anatomically modern Neanderthals emerged in Europe during the last 200,000 years or so, but there is still more to this story. A paper published in, on the subject of genetic turnover in Neanderthals, published in the Oxford Journals, uh, Molecular Biology and Evolution, which is, uh, this paper was Love Dallin, 2012, offers a revolutionary understanding. More recent groups of Neanderthals living in Western Europe lacked the genetic diversity evidenced in earlier individuals. Now, this suggests that they came out of a larger population. Strangely, for a supposedly European hominin, Central Asian Neanderthals display much greater genetic diversity. The data seems to paint a picture in which waves of Neanderthals are migrating into Europe from a larger, more genetically diverse Neanderthal population somewhere in Asia. Now, if all of this was not enough to call into question the current understanding of Neanderthal origins, and indeed the interbreeding events with Homo sapiens, there's another issue that still has to be addressed here. And that's the Denisovan factor. So during the detailed analysis of genetic material from the Cima de la Huesos fossil remains, it became apparent that the early Neanderthals also carried genes shared with Denisovans. But these genes were no longer present in more recent Neanderthal forms. So fossilized Denisovan remains are not found anywhere in Europe. There's no trace of their genes in the genome of modern Europeans. So this kind of explains why Neanderthals in Europe lost their Denisovan genes. There were clearly no Denisovans there to supply a, f a, f you know, a fresh flow of genes into the local population. So where did the ancestors of Neanderthals, living earlier than 430,000 years ago, acquire these Denisovan genes? Well, we know that Denisovans diverged away from Neanderthals sometime between 190,000 to 470,000 years ago. And so far, they're only definitively identified, definitively identified with two areas of the planet. Uh, the first region is associated, sorry, the first region associated with Denisovans is in southern Siberia, at a cave site not very far from China's northwestern border with Russia. The Denisova cave site has produced a small collection of bones just from four Denisovan individuals. The youngest bones date to around 50,000 years ago, whilst the oldest are over 100,000 years in age potentially 150,000. Now, genetic analysis of the Denisovan remains has revealed that ancestors of one of the individuals had interbred with Melanesian-type modern humans. 
which takes us then to the most significant evidence we have relating to Denisovans, and of course our second location that's associated with them. Because incredibly enough, the only region on Earth where modern humans evidence a strong genetic flag for an ancient interbreeding event with involving both Denisovans and modern humans is in Australasia, now specifically Northeast Australia and Guinea. Genetic studies of Australasian populations in the named areas have revealed that around 6% of the local modern human genome has come down from Denisovans and close relatives of theirs, beings not yet known in the fossil record. And this finding strongly indicates that a population of Denisovans was living in Australasia, and the dating for the flow of genes into Melanesians places them there at least as far back as 44,000 years ago. The majority of East and the majority of East Asians carry only around 0.1% Denisovan genes, suggesting Denisovans were not living in that region. Rather, they were living just down in sort of the beyond Southeast Asia, beyond the Wallace line down in Australasia. Um, so despite the fact that we know Homo sapiens were living in East Asia, it doesn't seem that Denisovans were living alongside them. Possibly they were, but that's yet to be shown. The only regions in which ancestors of European Neanderthals can have acquired genes shared with Denisovans and genes from early Homo sapiens are the lands from northwest China down to Australasia. The strongest evidence we have today as to the location of the Denisovan homeland places it not in Siberia but Australasia and Southeast Asia, making it very likely that Neanderthal ancestors moved up through Southeast Asia into East and Central Asia long before they entered Europe. An Asian migration model offers the most logical scenario if we are seeking to understand the archaic interbreeding signature detected in European Neanderthals. To my mind, Hollensteinstadel is certainly an important archaeological site in Germany, but it may well also represent a stake in the heart for the out-of-Africa theory. Thank you very much for listening. Look forward to speaking to you again very soon.